In this video, we're going to take a look at the vector paint node found with inside the XSI compositor. Now, if you haven't taken a look at the raster paint video, you may want to take a look at that first, just to get a good idea of how some of the fundamentals of the XSI paint system work. Now, to insert a vector paint node, just simply select the node in the operator selector and insert it to the tree like you would any other. Now, here I'm just hanging it off of a simple file input node, but this could be part of a much larger composite tree. Now, once the vector node is in place, just go ahead and double click or double tap to open up the image in the viewer. Once you can see the image, you can tell that you're in the vector paint uh, node because all of your paint tools here at the top of the viewer appear. Uh, you can either go in here and select uh, the paintbrush tool, which is a hotkey of B, or you can start to mark out different shapes. We're going to start by using the paintbrush tool, so just go ahead, press the B key, and now I can just start going and painting some different brush strokes. Now notice this is fully pressure sensitive. If I paint hard strokes, they're obviously very hard. Uh, and this is using the airbrush uh, brush. All of the brushes here and all of our different menus from raster paint also work exactly the same in vector paint. But the difference is, with a vector paint stroke, once I've painted them, I can actually grab them, move them around, and further manipulate them. I can rotate them with this handle here. If we go ahead and grab this handle like this, we can go ahead and rotate this object. We can grab these scale handles in the corner. You can change the pivot point here in the middle as well. You can also go ahead and press the Enter key, or go to your Tools and click on the Object Properties button, the same as pressing Enter. Once you do this, it'll bring up all the properties that make this brush stroke appear the way it does. Let's go ahead and close this page that's behind it so we can get a clear look at this one. Uh, so we can go ahead and start to change the color, the opacity if we'd like. Uh, plus, just like in Raster Paint, we have all the tools that we have to create exactly how our brush stroke is going to look. I can turn on some textures. Uh, I can change the curve if I want a different profile to the brush. Uh, I can come over here and change the radius. And all of this stuff is being changed after, of course, I've drawn that stroke. Uh, we can change the spacing of the stroke. Are we using a merge tool, an erase brush? Uh, exactly the way it works in raster paint is how it works in vector paint. Now we can actually move this around and we can keyframe the scaling and the rotation using the transform tab, but we can actually change the shape or the profile of these curves. If we'd like to animate um, actually moving strokes, we need to use shapes. So we're going to go ahead and delete this stroke, and let's just go ahead and take a look at how we create animated shapes. Now for that, you'll find that underneath the draw pulldown. We want to either do a markout shape or a freehand shape. And now each shape can also specify whether you're going to fill the shape or whether it's just going to be an outline of that shape, or both. So in this case, we'll select both. I'm just going to move my viewer over here a little bit to the right, and I'm going to now use the Markout Shape tool. And you can see that what it's doing is it's basically allowing me to create a shape just by using a series of points. Now, if I double-click, or if I click, rather, on top of this existing point, it's going to close the shape and lock it in place. So now I can go and select the space bar to select the shape, and then press the Enter key to bring up, again, all the properties that are defining this shape. Now, you'll notice right away we have a white outline and a black fill. And that's what we see in this area right here. If I want, I can change the color of the fill. I can also change the fill style. We can use None. We can use Solid, which is going to use the color here. We can also use a merge source. Now, I have a merge source set for the sky image here by simply clicking on here, right-clicking, and setting it as a merge source. And you can see now we have a merge source of the sky uh, filling in our, uh, our fill or we can select None. There's also Reveal, which we'll look at in just a second. So let's go keep it on None, and we can then turn on or off our outline. Uh, we can also animate the profile, or the, uh, the start and end of our outline. So if I grab these handles here, I can change the start point and the end point, like this. Uh, maybe we'll put this at zero and just show you how we can keyframe a actually an animated or more of a like kind of a handwriting um, type of an effect. So we'll just say at frame one, we'll set the keyframe for the start. We'll move to frame five and just move it 100% or 60% down the line, down the uh, the curve. Save a keyframe here, and we've just created that easily an animated brush stroke. Now we can also change the profile of the shape or the uh, the actual. The, uh, the profile of the shape. So what we can do here is press the M key, which will bring up the Move Point tool. And I can now actually go in here and just start to move the different points on this shape. So what we can do here, if we go to frame one, let's just save a keyframe. So we'll say Animate Save Shape key, which is going to lock this shape in place. And maybe we'll move here to frame five. And let's go ahead and turn off our outline just so we can see this better. We'll just go and start to pull these points and push them into position. 
I'm actually going to go and just do a little bit of a, a zoom in on here and just show you a couple neat things about these bezier handles. Uh, you'll notice that they are, of course, beziers. If I want to move these handles, I have a few different uh, hotkeys which allow me to further control these handles. First of all, the Alt key will allow me to break a handle like this so that I can get the, uh, the curve to look how I like. I can also use the Shift key, which will allow me to scale the handle out like this while keeping this handle locked in place. And the Control key will actually lock the two handles together and keep them uniform like this. So just some nice little hotkeys there for the, uh, for the Bezier handles. We can also, on the fly, change this to a B-spline curve or right back to Bezier's. And we can also go ahead and insert keyframes even after we've set up a key shape. So let's go ahead and save another shape key. So we actually now have an animated uh, stroke right there. And you can see we've got a little bit off here on the first frame. So let's just move that up. Well, let's say we actually needed to add some more detail here. We wanted to get a few more points in there. Go ahead and press the Insert key. And you can go ahead and start adding keys to the curve. And notice by holding down the shift key, it's not changing the profile of those curves either. And now if I save another shape key, even though I've gone ahead and added those points, I'll still get a nice interpolation uh, from, my, uh, from the keyframe that I set earlier. So let's go ahead and zoom out. Or you can press the R key, which will basically center your image in the viewport. And let's take a look at a few more things. Now we had the reveal effect here, so let's go ahead and take a look at what that does. And to do that, we're actually going to need another, uh, another curve, or another shape. So let's just go ahead and set this back up to have a, a merge and then this outline. And I'm just going to draw a quick rectangle shape. So we'll say draw rectangle. I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this. We'll select that shape, the property page refreshed, and I'm going to change this to reveal. And we'll also go ahead and turn off the outline. Now what the reveal does is it'll go and reveal all the way down to the original bottom layer. So no, ma no matter how many strokes you have over top of it, the reveal brush will always reveal down to the very bottom. If we go back to our stroke here, just to show you a couple more things, we could, uh, let's go ahead and turn off the outline. We have things like a drop shadow we can add. Your controls just automatically appear there at the bottom. We can change the softness, of course, things like that you do to a drop shadow. And also there's edge blur, just to kind of smooth the edge of that, uh, that hard shape up. So again, these shapes can all be animated. You can do shape animation, translation animation. Uh, you can change the, uh, the profile of the curve. All of these parameters can be animated over time to really make the vector paint system a very powerful addition to XSI.